in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Engineering Plasticity, Chapter 2, Stress Analysis, Part 4. Well, we talked about uh, a doubly oblique plane and uh, we demonstrated if a general stress vector is applied on this plane ABC and uh, we also draw the normal ON to this plane ABC and uh, we set uh, we set about uh, finding out the components of S on different planes now from previous analysis on the cubic element we had these components of stress on the side of the cube which coincide with the side of the plane of this uh, plane ABC for instance we have uh, a side here OAC, OCB and OAB these planes also coincide with the faces of the cube and these are the components of a general stress on the faces of the cube okay now we are going to uh, relate this S to these components of a stress therefore to do that we say that this a stress vector S which is acting on A, B, C uh, could have two components one along the direction of the normal which is ON and we call it SN and the other one uh, on the plane okay along the plane which is SS the shear stress and the normal stress we could always um, resolve any stress vector into any directions so here we have decided to resolve it into two directions in normal direction and component of shear okay then therefore S2 in the magnitude is equal to SS2 plus SN2 because if we connect this uh, together we get a triangle and this is the relationship between the um, sides of a rectangular triangle and also we can write S in terms of the components along other directions like the Cartesian directions X, Y, Z therefore S2 is equal to X, S X2 plus S Y2 plus S Z2 and here we, we are saying that A, B, C the area of A, B, C is delta A this area is of A, B, C right then so we wrote these equations before now we are going to write this equation what is this equation? this equation says that this S which is a generalized vector in any arbitrary direction this has a component in the X direction which we call it S x okay in order to write the equilibrium in the x direction okay in the x direction we must write all the forces in the x direction equate all the forces in the x direction so we have one a force in the x direction which is a stress times the area okay the area a b c times s x gives this force in the x direction and then we have this uh, sigma xx which is in the x direction times obc times this area because it's acting on this area and then we have uh, sigma xy again sigma xy which is tau xy similar tau xy tau yx is in the x direction so sigma xy times oac that is the area on which xy 
acts on okay o a c and similarly sigma x z okay sigma x z also is tau x z tau x z tau x z acts on o a b therefore multiplied by o a b the stress times the area on which it acts gives gives the force so here we have equated all the forces in the x direction and therefore we can write down um, this relationship too because we, we need to find out what these areas are because we have the area ABC which is delta A okay delta A is area ABC we want to know what areas these areas are now let's have a look at this area ABC okay this area ABC we say is half AB times CD AB is the base of this triangle and CD is perpendicular to AB okay CD is perpendicular to AB and uh, here note that uh, uh, this is the normal of the plane ABC this normal makes angles alpha beta and gamma with x y and z direction here we have only shown gamma direction which is uh, uh, the direction of the normal with the z direction okay so because this is normal to this plane okay and uh, it makes uh, angle gamma with this one this angle is also equal to gamma why is it equal to gamma because this normal is perpendicular to CD why is it perpendicular to CD because it's perpendicular to this area to this plane and this CD is on the plane therefore ON is perpendicular to CD and also this Z direction is perpendicular to XY plane and OD is in the XY plane therefore this is perpendicular to that therefore to these two lines are perpendicular to these two lines and therefore that angle is equal to that angle okay uh, so this angle is gamma therefore half AB times CD which is the area ABC delta A okay uh, we got it here and also area ABO a b o is equal to a b okay the base a b times c d cos gamma because this is c d and that's gamma and that's cos cosine of gamma so that we get that area a b o similarly for other planes we could do that now then ODB is equal to COP ODP is equal to COP okay we just shown that area ABO divided by area ABC and these two AB times CD times half cancel each other out we only get cos gamma and we know that cosine rules we usually write down cosine alpha equal to L, cosine beta is equal to M, and cosine gamma is equal to N, L, M, N. We call them cosine ratios, right? You have done this before. So we get here cos gamma or N, and therefore, uh, similarly for other uh, areas, like AOC and OCB we can write this equal to M and equal to L as I mentioned before therefore we have found out in here that um, uh, the areas of OAC and OAB and OBC can be related to the area of ABC because the area ABC is delta A delta A times N is area ABO delta A times M is area ACO 
and delta A times L is area BCO. From the previous page, we have this SX times ABC, which is the area on which SX is applied. Sigma XX times OBC, okay, OBC, and Sigma XY times OAC, and Sigma XZ times OAB, okay. From previous page, we obtained that OBC is equal to ABC times delta L, and ABC is delta A. Sorry, we said that OBC, area OBC, is equal to, to that of area ABC times the cosine ratio L. And uh, similarly for these other two, we found out that they are delta A M, delta A M. And this is delta A. If we write down these, instead of these, we get this formula relationship. And uh, delta A's cancel out. Therefore, we get Sx, sigma xx, L, sigma xy, M, sigma xz, N, and similarly for Sy and Sz, we get similar relationships. You can see that here we have sigma xx, sigma y, y, sigma z, z, that's the diagonal of the matrix, and L, M, N are repeated all over the place. Um, <clears throat> therefore, we found that the components of S, which is a generalized stress vector on any arbitrary plane, can be related to the components of stresses along x, y, z directions and related to the cosine ratios. Of course, cosine ratio is the angle that the normal of the plane makes with X, Y, Z planes. Now we would like to determine the normal component S N. Okay, normal component obviously is along the direction of the normal to the plane. Uh, so S N times delta A again, because it's acting on delta A, is equal to S X. Uh, times L, S, Y times N, S, Z times N, the normal, times delta A. And so we get S, N is equal to S, X times L, S, Y times N, and S, Z times N. You know, this one is very similar to this, except that it's perpendicular to the plane, and it has uh, no... Uh, components uh, like the shear stresses because in normal stress it doesn't have because if you remember uh, in the other slide we had two components one SN which is along the normal direction and the other one SS which is along the plane is the shear stress so for the normal stress, we don't have any shear stresses because the shear stress is perpendicular to the normal stress. Uh, and therefore, Sn is like that. And uh, so, we can write here Sx. We put this one, substitute it here. For Sy, we substitute it for this one. And for Sz, we substitute this one. So we get this relationship. Because if you substitute sigma x6l, sigma xym, sigma xn into here, we got the L, so L is multiplied by this, we get L square Lm Ln. Okay, that's why we get two to xy Lm because we have a sigma xy here, sigma y x here, sigma zy, sigma zx, sigma xz, sigma yz so we have all these components which are added together and instead of sigma yx or yx we just write tau xy and similarly for yz and similarly for zx so this is 
uh, what we get okay for Sn and we call this coordinate transformation what does it mean coordinate transformation because coordinate transformation means that uh, we can transform between coordinate axes uh, in fact this is uh, true in here and we will show later on that what a useful relationship this is I remind you again that this Sn is perpendicular to the arbitrary plane that we took at the beginning of our analysis and x, y, z are the coordinates Cartesian coordinates so this is the relationship between the normal and the Cartesian coordinates okay then now we want to because at the beginning we resolved this stress into two components shear component and normal component we have just obtained the normal component of stress now we want to find out what the shear component of stress is so we use this relationship and we write s s to the power of 2 is equal to s2 minus s n to the power of 2 and therefore here we can write down s s squared s x squared s y squared s z squared minus s n squared because s squared is equal to s x squared x y squared s z squared we obtained this from previous result now then s s therefore uh, we can write it also in another way this is writing it from here this is writing it from another logic which is sx times ls sy times ms sz times nz what does it mean it means that uh, ls ms ns are the direction cosines of ss in relation to the x y z okay axis so here instead of l m n we have l s l s m s n s which are the direction cosines of s s so on the other hand we have this relationship between direction cosines why do we have this relationship because the x y z axis are perpendicular to each other and uh, we can get this from the geometry okay and also since uh, these uh, the normal vector and the shear vector are perpendicular to each other because it is n is perpendicular to this plane and ss is on the plane therefore ss is perpendicular to n then we have this relationship between these, these two vectors lls mms nns is equal to zero the sum of the direction cosines becomes zero and so uh, since we have these relationships if i substitute here I've got SS I substitute here from for LS in here uh, so I get uh, SX times MMS NNS in other words I have uh, eliminated LS okay from here and there I have eliminated LS and I get this relationship just by substituting instead of ls ls is equal to minus mms nns divided by l so i put it here like that these two remain the same so i eliminated l s like that and going further um, this equation of course um, i have here in terms of l mn also ms and ns i have here 
So from these two relationships, I can get this because Ls is equal to, uh, sorry, Ls here is equal to minus Nns plus Nns divided by L. So Ls I substitute here, get there, and this is also all of it in terms of Ms and Ns, no Ls in it. Okay, here no Ls in it. So what I can do here is to eliminate Ms. So I get Ms out of here and there, Ms. From this equation, I get Ms, a relationship like that. Here I've got only Ns. Therefore, if I substitute there for Ms, I get this relationship. And you can see that here I don't have any Ls or Ms. I just have Ns, Ns only. Ln I have, but I have only Ns. Okay, so I'm left with Ns, and therefore the direction cosine for the shear components are determined. Why? Because I can get Ns from this equation and uh, put it here to get Ms, and put it here to get Ns. That means that uh, I have found the direction cosines of the shear stress component.